Hi, my name is Randall Allen Loy, and I'm an infertility specialist in Orlando, Florida. And today we're going to be talking about one of those seminal tests, so to speak, the semen analysis. Pun intended, I guess. Anyway, I want to show you something that makes a lot of grown men cry, this little semen cup. And this is one of the things you're going to be seeing at the infertility specialist office. A couple quick stories about that. We uh, have asked men to provide us samples, and sometimes they don't leave us semen samples. One particular fellow, we asked him to leave a semen sample and he brought us back a full cup of urine and uh, we said, okay, well, we don't really need this kind of sample. Can you bring us a semen sample? And so the next thing that he put into the lab, he had the top of the lid on top of a fecal specimen and uh, my laboratory people were a little bit indignant with that particular attempt. So this is the semen cup, a sterile container and you will be provided with one of these and you may collect at home if that's okay with your doctor or maybe at the doctor's office. The container should be received within 45 minutes of ejaculation if you're collecting at home. Now different ways to collect are by masturbation typically. You may also use a special seminal collection device which is a condom that does not have any spermicidal agent in it, nothing to kill the sperm. And finally, and we don't like this way too much, but if it's the only way to collect a sample, it can be done by so-called coitus interruptus, where intercourse is stopped and ejaculation takes place into a cup. If a man's had a vasectomy or has other blockage, we might place a needle into the storage tank, the epididymis, that's called percutaneous epididymal sperm aspiration, or PESA. Now, TESI is a different procedure. That's a testicular sperm extraction. And those samples then can be frozen for subsequent usage in the IVF cycle. There are so few sperm with PESA and TESI that we do have to do ICSI, the direct sperm injection technique. I'm gonna be talking more about those things in future episodes, so stay tuned about those. Now, what is a semen analysis? It is the examination of the seminal fluid, including, of course, the sperm cells. And I'd like to refer now to this board on my left. The World Health Organization have revised their criteria as to what a normal semen analysis is. And over the decades, those criteria have been downgraded and downgraded as the quality of semen around the world has fallen. The most recent edition of the World Health Organization criteria was in 2010. And the volume of the sample should be at least 1.5 milliliters, which is about a third of a teaspoon. There should be at least 15 million sperm per milliliter. So if we know the volume and the concentration, we can get the total count. Typically, there are 20 to 40 million sperm as a minimum in a sample. More normal, in fact, when I learned as a resident, we had a quick and easy rule. There should be approximately three milliliters of volume. There should be 60 million sperm per milliliter, 60% moving, and 60% normals. Now, over the decades, that's changed considerably. So now 1.5 milliliters, 15 million sperm per milliliter, we like motility to be at least 50%, and we talk about going from point A to point B, or progression, and we give that on a scale of four, three, two, and one. Four is rapidly progressive, zipping along from point A to point B, like being on the San Diego freeway at three o'clock in the morning. Three would be getting there, but maybe with crooked or circuitous behavior, kind of sluggish, maybe needing an espresso or cappuccino. Two would be where there's basically no progression from point A to point B, like the couch potato Saturday afternoon with a beer watching football. And then finally, one would be dead and dying, get the casket, get the nails, the guys ready to go in the ground. So now we come to morphology. Morphos means form in Greek. So amorphous would mean without form, but these all have forms. This guy here would be a normal semen analysis, a tapered head, a well-defined midpiece, which is the battery pack, and a long tapered tail. Right next is a big head, a giant head. There can be pinheads, I guess that's where the name comes from, two heads, two tails, cytoplasmic or nuclear defects, and finally midpiece defects. So if you can think about it, pretty much it goes with sperm. But what we try to get are the most normal sperm. It turns out that about 30% of men with a so-called normal semen analysis, things might look good like this, but there can be abnormal sperm function. And then we know that men who have a very disproportionately high amount of abnormal sperm are sometimes able to father children. So no one semen analysis is the end all. 
There have to be actually several data points, as I tell my patients, several semen analyses. And especially if that first analysis is bad, we're going to want to repeat that two or three or four weeks later to see if the second analysis is good. A couple of other factors in the World Health Organization criteria, the fructose or the fruit sugar, that's the sugar that the sperm like, that's what they live on, should be at least three milligrams per milliliter. We also look at pH, which is a measure of acidity or basicity. That should be between about 7.0 and 8.2. We also look at the number of white blood cells. If there are greater than 1 million white blood cells per milliliter, that can indicate an infection. For example, an infection in the prostate gland or an infection in the epididymis, the storage tank of the sperm. So that might necessitate a visit to the urologist to get that infection cleaned up. One last parameter we look at is called liquefaction time. When sperm is ejaculated, of course, it's a liquid. It's a viscous liquid, but it forms a tight clot. And that clot has to break down in 20 minutes or so. If that liquefaction does not take place within 60 minutes, if it's still there at an hour, that is a problem. Now I'd like to show you one giant sperm cell. If this were the actual size, imagine how big the egg would have to be to accommodate this rascal. One of the most complicated cells in the body, this little cell, which is microscopic, has to get from point A to point B, as we've talked about. It has the same mechanism as your muscle. So the same way we're able to move our arms is the same way the sperm moves. It's a beautiful little cell. To count the sperm, we use a special chamber. Much like hematologists use to count red blood cells, it's called a macular chamber. Here, you see one of our technicians in our office counting sperm. Well, it takes about 73 to 74 days to make a sperm cell, and I'm often asked, what can I do to make my sperm better? What should I be doing? I often recommend a well-balanced diet, daily aerobic exercise, plenty of fluid, try to decrease the physical and emotional stress in your life, and vitamins. There are a couple that I recommend, and your doctor might have some other recommendations, but we especially recommend fertility blend vitamins at the GNC, the General Nutrition Centers at the mall, or Conception XR, available on the internet. A recent study out of Southern California, sponsored by the California Walnut Growers Association, so remember that, has recommended that 75 grams of walnuts a day, that's about the equivalent of two level handfuls, can increase sperm count, motility, and percentage of normal forms. The researchers say that walnuts have a very high amount of linolenic acid, and that seems to help the sperm. I'd like to leave you with a story. As I told you at the outset, the semen analysis should be delivered within 45 minutes of collection. So several years ago, we gave one of these containers to one of my patient's husbands, and he said, I'll get back with you. I said, okay, just within 45 minutes. Well, we didn't get a semen analysis when scheduled, but it arrived in the mail five days later and it was just in a plain envelope, no note, no nothing. We opened it up, and the way we tracked it to him was by his return address. Obviously, nothing was alive. Maybe he should have used FedEx. Thanks for joining me again this week. We really appreciate your being here. Please leave your comments below. If you do have questions or concerns of a private nature, please email me, and I will incorporate those into future episodes. Please subscribe, tell your friends about us, and I look forward to seeing you back here next week.